I'm Scott Allen Miller, and with many of you for the first time considering maybe you want to move outside of your home country and explore the world as an expat, whether temporarily, permanently, or as a digital nomad, I, having lived all over the world today, I'm going to break down 10 alternative countries that you may want to consider when you're looking at moving abroad. You don't have to move to the mainstream countries, to the ones that we talk about all the time. We're going to look at some choices you may not have on your radar that might be a little bit interesting to you that are available and safe and affordable. So let's take a look at 10 alternative places that you can move as an American or Canadian looking to move abroad temporarily or permanently right after the bump. Let's get started with 10 alternative countries that are perfect for American expats. Country number one, Romania. First up on our list of interesting countries that you could be moving to today as a North American is Romania. Now I had the benefit of getting to live in Romania in 2016 and this this is one of my absolute favorite countries that I've ever been able to live in. Um, I was only able to live there briefly but it is just such a uh, safe vibrant, beautiful, old world country. Here you get some of the, the best of what you would picture as classic Europe. You get the castles and the rivers and the the, the ancient world and ties to the Roman Empire and a, a beautiful location in the heart of, of activity in Eastern Europe. So you're very close to Bulgaria and Turkey and Greece and the Balkan states and uh, Moldova. And there's just, there's a lot in the region to do. It's very easy to travel in and out. It has a major airport, um, easy access to Istanbul, the global airport. Uh, it is very low cost of living. So the, the strong points of Romania are classic European lifestyles with the most extreme safety that you're going to experience anywhere in the world. This is one of the things that really catches people off guard about Romania is that the degree of safety that you will experience here is unlike anything you will find anywhere else. There's so many places around it are, of course, very safe, but Romania really just leads in the most amazing. You never have to worry about anything really in Romania, and you have um, what is essentially the world's best internet infrastructure. So for people who are looking to be working abroad or anything like that, um, it gives you some of the best uh, situations for that. It gives you large cities like Bucharest, but you also have uh, loads and loads of farmland and small villages. You have a high degree of people who speak English. Uh, you have different regions with different, um, you know, you have mountainous regions. You have a little bit of uh, Black Sea waterfront. You can be very close to kind of Central Europe. You can be very much out in the in the, the farmlands. You have a lot in Romania. This is a large country with a lot to offer. Negatives, of course, Romanian is not a very broadly useful language around the world, so you're going to have to work a little bit more to learn it. It is not super similar to other romance languages. It's Eastern Latin, so you're, you're going to notice some differences there. Uh, even if you speak Italian or French or Spanish, Romanian is going to give you some challenges for sure. Um, and you are slightly isolated being very far east in Europe, but you're still, you're still connected by train and highway. It's very easy to drive. Uh, and of course, flights uh, all over Europe. Um, this, is, this is a surprisingly great pick, one of the, the best places I've ever lived and a, a absolutely hidden gem. I can't say enough good about Romania. There is basically no way that you will go to Romania and not just be shocked by what a good choice it is, whether it's something you're looking at very short term. Uh, if you're coming from North America, Romania gives you an automatic 90 days, very simple. That gives you some time to either make decisions and figure out how you're going to stay longer, which 90 days gives you a lot of time, or you can simply cross the border into the Schengen, stay for 90 days, and then return to Romania, uh, which there's a lot of people when you're first looking at moving abroad, you may be looking into an investigation type uh, mindset, and Romania is perfect for that because of the 
mixture of borders available to you in the region. Uh, this particular area in the Balkans is the best in all of Europe for being able to, with very little effort, move between countries and stay indefinitely with, with really minor moves. Of course, most people are not looking for that. They're going to look for something a lot more stable. But when you're in that first, I'm looking to move abroad. I'm looking to investigate. I'm looking to learn more uh, that that region is going to give you so many borders and so many safe, low cost, absolutely fantastic cultural options in a very small area that uh, until you are ready to make that final commitment, uh, this flexibility is going to be absolutely fantastic. Country number two, Cambodia. Cambodia is one of the truly overlooked gems for expats located in the in the southeastern Asia peninsular area. Cambodia is a relatively large country with large population. They have large cities. They have beautiful, famous uh, uh, archaeological sites. There's a lot of great history uh, available in Cambodia and some very tragic history as well. It is a super friendly, super safe, and unbelievably low cost country in the heart of uh, so much being in Southeast Asia, right in the middle of the peninsula, it has easy access to a lot of neighboring countries that are also really vibrant and interesting. And that's an important aspect when we're looking at moving to a new country for a lot of people. You're very interested in, of course, being able to uh, explore your region, to travel to other places. And Cambodia is very well positioned for a lot of additional travel. It lies right next to wonderful countries like Laos and and Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, and, and relatively easy access to major players in the region like China, uh, the Philippines, even India, Australia. Uh, so very, very easy to do a lot of uh, travel throughout the region from Cambodia, uh, where the country itself is, is a little bit smaller than a lot uh, that you'll encounter, but it does have uh, quite a bit of, of waterfront. So you have a lot of beach options, you have a lot of city options, and of course you have a lot of countryside options as well. But the, the incredible level of safety, good access to, to food and cuisine, um, both from its own, uh, but also from its region. It's just a very easy country to deal with. Of course, the language is going to be challenging for most Westerners, but you're going to find a lot of people who speak English and French in this region. Uh, so you generally are going to be able to get by without any problem. All of the countries directly around Cambodia have a lot of tourist infrastructure, so there's a lot of uh, design and planning around that. So you'll be able to get around very easily easily but this really is a great choice and it's so often overlooked so if you are an expat or potentially an expat who's really interested in getting out and finding a place where you can be um, away from from so many other expats of course you're going to find some but if you if you want a more authentic experience where you're really becoming a part of a new place uh, and and you think that the safety and cost and location of Southeast Asia are, are attractive to you uh, then can Cambodia easily is going to be a just slam dunk winner. This is, this is, I really, really like Cambodia for this region. Um, and it also has a lot of flexibility if you need to visit other countries, if you're looking to move around and not be just permanently based in one, one place. There's so many countries with different jurisdictions, obviously, within Southeast Asia that much like Europe or Central America, it is super easy to start in, say, Cambodia, and then move to Vietnam, then move to Laos, then move to uh, Malaysia, move to Thailand, come back to Cambodia and have uh, a circle throughout the area and, and work more uh, nomadically, uh, or work or exist more nomadically, uh, and just come up with a more flexible option. But such a great option that way too many people overlook. Country number three, Uruguay. Uruguay is starting to get a lot of attention 
uh, for those who are looking at South America, it's suddenly coming up. This is a very important country because it is traditionally quite inexpensive. However, at the moment, it's important to note this is very expensive right now. So it's not the low cost location it traditionally is. It is the southernmost country for its northern point. So the whole country lies so far south, more, more far south than any other country in the world. Uh, it's part of the southern cone. It is extremely safe. It is very welcoming to expats. Uh, a couple important things. The capital, Montevideo, is the one large city in the country and has the majority of the population. The rest of the country, which is not tiny, is mostly empty. You have a lot of, of small villages and open countryside agriculture, but it's well positioned with especially Montevideo being super close to Buenos Aires. You're able to get into other countries very quickly. You can take a ferry to Buenos Aires. You have access to Brazil very nearby and not too far away to Paraguay, flights to Chile, very easy. So it's well positioned uh, in the midst of things, but it itself is a very unpopulated zone with lots of waterfront and lots of open countryside. It's a beautiful country, very safe, a bit more expensive, really good tax stru structures, and very welcoming to expats. So this one's suddenly on a lot of people's radar. So this one's a little bit less of an alternative, but it is still a new up and coming destination. So we're listing it as an alternative because it does not have the traditional trends and benefits of uh, being at the top of everyone's list like a Colombia or an Argentina would be. Those places get m a lot more mind share. But Uruguay, a lot of people are mentioning it, but very few people are going because it is so far south. It is an extremely far flight uh, and, and there aren't as many flights. Being a very small country, you have a lot fewer flight options. So it remains a bit isolated. It remains a bit of an alternative, but a really good one for you to consider. And this is the grassland in the Pampas. So much of Uruguay is open agricultural land, absolutely beautiful uh, and famous, just like Argentina and Brazil for its meats and cuisine. And it's, it really is kind of a blend of Argentina and Brazil in many ways. Country number four. Tanzania. East Africa rarely comes up on people's radar, but Tanzania is definitely an overlooked gem. If you're familiar with my show, Nicaragua is where I am based, and Tanzania is very much a counterpart far to the east. Very similar weather, uh, very similar uh, latitude, but it is an enormous country. Unlike Nicaragua at 7 million, Tanzania has about 66 million people, has giant cities like Dar es Salaam. It has the e exotic island of Zanzibar. It has uh, big interior cities. It has l quite a bit of Indian Ocean coastline. It has some modern parts. It has uh, rural villages. It has wide open steppe. It is obviously the country famous for the Serengeti and the home of African safaris and lions and zebras and giraffes and just it's it's where so much iconic Africa takes place but it's also a reasonably safe country we don't want to say it's it's super safe on the on the, the safety scales but it does especially for expats it's going to have a lot of good safe options you have beautiful lake zones it's right in the heart of a really wonderful East African zone. Uh, you have access to Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi. Uh, the DR Congo, probably not something that's gonna interest most people. Uh, Malawi, fantastic option. You have a lot of stuff we always say, right? Just like with Cambodia, you want a country in most cases where you have easy access to other things and you want variety within the country, but you often get some of your best variety outside of the country as well. And, and Tanzania is really great for that. You can use this as a launch pad to a really large region uh, with a giant population and a lot of beautiful, beautiful terrain and mountains and, and the wild African steppe and uh, wildlife and lakes and oceans and islands and this is truly uh, a really great option and incredibly low cost, even lower cost than anywhere in Latin America. From my sources who have lived in Tanzania, uh, they say that you will get a lot of the same feelings, a lot of the same vibe as you'll get from like Central America. Obviously, much bigger zone, some really significant differences like zebra running across the plain. Uh, but you will also get a lot of similarities um, and a slightly lower price point. So uh, this is one that I think for those who are willing to be farther away from their home base in North America or not quite so far away from a home base in Europe, uh, Tanzania is um, kind of off the path. It is lesser known, but it really does hit 
many of the same sweet spots that we often see in Latin America that my audience has a tendency to prioritize. And uh, so if you're willing to go that little bit more exotic, uh, a little bit more uh, off the path and a little bit physically farther away, and of course, far time zone uh, from North America, Tanzania might have quite a bit of interesting offerings for you. So make sure it's on your list. Country number five, Indonesia. Lots of Americans and Europeans, when they're looking at uh, Oceania, will mention Bali. Bali is beautiful and safe and exotic and surprisingly low cost. But Bali is just one of many islands within Indonesia. Indonesia is the largest country in the region, one of the largest countries in the world. It dominates Oceania and it is a absolutely excellent option that, yes, Bali itself is a great option, but Indonesia in the broader sense is a really good option for expats who are looking at a little bit less mainstream. Of course, Bali is very mainstream, but if you get to the other islands, Java, Sumatra, uh, and, and tons of smaller islands, uh, Indonesia has a lot more to offer than just what you see in Bali. If Bali wasn't enough, Indonesia is generally quite safe. It is a very large zone, so you get a lot of options. It is surprisingly inexpensive. And of course, Bali is one of the more expensive options within Indonesia. So if Bali seems just a little bit too expensive, Indonesia is probably going to have something to offer you uh, that's, that's gonna cut even that down a little bit. So this falls very healthily into to the Southeast Asia uh, mind-bogglingly cheap zone. This entire area, everything in Southeast Asia, everything north of Australia up to China has this uh, cost of living that is truly surprising. You get a lot of modernity, you get a high degree of safety almost everywhere in the region and almost everywhere, of course, like Singapore is an exception, some major metropolitan areas, Hong Kong is an exception, but by and large, everywhere in the, in the zone, is very inexpensive while combined with all these great features, this modernity, this really great cuisine, safety. Of course, languages uh, uh, across the region, very challenging. So that's something to consider. But if you if you love the ocean, you like islands, uh, you're looking for big populations with access to major cities. Jakarta is one of the major metropolitan areas of the planet. You want some really interesting history and temples, kind of similar to what you might see in Cambodia and Thailand and those places as well. Indonesia certainly should be on your list. And even if you're only gonna look at Bali and you're only gonna look at the more mainstream, that's great. But if you're willing to go a little bit further out, this is Jakarta. This is a city that just seems amazing. If you, if you want to live Blade Runner but can't afford Hong Kong, Jakarta might be the place that you're looking for. So these are some great options. This is a good way to still be in the midst of a lot of things, great access to the world. It's a big, powerful country, uh, so you're not actually going to be that isolated, even though back home in Europe or North America, uh, you're gonna find very few people who really are keenly aware of Indonesia. They have no idea what's gonna be offered there. They know it sounds exotic. They know it sounds interesting, but they're gonna know nothing about it. And they'll often not even realize that Bali is in Indonesia. Country number six, Albania. I was lucky enough to get to spend a bit of time in Albania when I lived in Eastern Europe. And uh, Albania is truly a hidden gem. It's starting to be on the radar. This is one that people are figuring out and lying directly between Greece and Italy should tell you everything you need to know. It is amazing Mediterranean lifestyle, but in a spot that is lower cost than either of those locations. It is very safe. We're really taking an effort to make sure we're looking at super safe locations. It is very inexpensive. It has been overlooked due to a rough history over much of the 20th century. And so it fell off of the radar of a lot of people, even though it was surrounded by the heavily sought after Balkan zone, which is well known for being amazing. Albania was kind of hidden off on its own and now is starting to come into the limelight. So. It has amazing Mediterranean waterfront. It has great mountainous zones, very friendly people, good food, uh, low cost, extremely welcoming to uh, Americans and Europeans who want to go there to work. It's easy to get long-term visas. It's easy to be able to work from there. Uh, very easy to be able to stay long-term. Uh, so Albania is 
a fantastic choice for someone who wants to be off the beaten path, do something a little bit different, but really wants that European lifestyle and wants to be in the midst of some of the greatest vacation spots, Greece, Croatia. I love Bosnia, Romania, uh, Italy, all really, really close, easily accessible. You want that Mediterranean lifestyle, Albania might be your key to being able to get that. I also just want to mention really quickly, Kosovo is a bordering Albanian region that technically falls over a border, but I love Kosovo as well. It's a surprising gem in the region. Country number seven, Malaysia. Not quite as isolated, not as little known as Indonesia and some other locations. Malaysia, especially because of the nomad capitalist, has really been coming up on the uh, mind space of a lot of potential expats, but it's still a little bit lesser known. So I decided to include it on this list because it is an excellent choice and a little bit less mainstream than a Thailand or a Vietnam here in Southeast Asia. So Malaysia, again, just like the other ones in the region, very low cost big modern cities, very, very safe, beautiful history, temples, those kinds of things, lots of tourism, just an excellent zone with so much to offer, really booming now as, as many, many expats are starting to look at it, but it's a large country. So while you will, yes, have lots of expats around, uh, you also have a country that is um, kind of like a Panama, where it's really a regional melting pot already before you start having uh, Western expats begin to look at it. And so that actually makes it kind of a good destination because you have less of a singular local culture and more of a large regional melting pot. And you can kind of get lost in this, this beautiful, safe, inexpensive country. And again, really easy to get to lots of wonderful places in the region um, here in nicaragua my favorite asian restaurant is malaysian they have a really wonderful cuisine there which is a blend of many things from the region you have a lot of people coming from china to malaysia this is a great option um, and and for those who are a little bit wary of going too far outside of the mainstream which i do encourage you to do i don't be afraid but for those who who feel that they need a little bit more hand holding on this list, Malaysia is really going to be, along with Romania, your best choices for you're not that far off the beaten path. There are other people who can provide a lot of information, um, but you still have a big country with a lot to explore. And if you want to, to get away, you can. Country number eight, Guatemala. Also here in Latin America, and we talk about this one a lot on my channel, is Guatemala. I absolutely love Guatemala, and we do have a number of episodes that we have filmed up there. It's not that very far away from where I am based in Nicaragua. Uh, but Guatemala is often overlooked when people are really seriously considering becoming expats uh, for I have no idea why. It just doesn't get the attention that it deserves. It is the big uh, population zone of Central America. It is so much larger by population than all of the other Central American countries. It's a completely different animal. It's capital city of Guatemala city or Guate is the largest city in Central America. It feels like a major Latin American powerhouse city, like a Mexico city, uh, Buenos Aires, something like that. It's not quite that large, but it is a really big, important city. Its secondary cities are still quite large and have a lot to offer. The weather in Guatemala is fantastic. It is the land of eternal spring because of its highlands. You have just cool weather all the time, but you still can go down to the Pacific coast and have uh, amazing uh, ocean waterfront when you want it, um, interior lakes like Atitlan, Lago de Atitlan, uh, and, and others like Flores, absolutely beautiful, amazing historical zones. This is the traditional capital of the Mayan world and remains uh, considered its capital city. You have tons of volcanoes, and uh, this is Antigua, the, the ancient city, um, and that is Antigua as well. Uh, there is just there's so much to be found in Guatemala, and it's located so close to North America that uh, living in Guatemala, you have very easy access to all of Central America, but also to Mexico, and flights to and from the United States are only about two hours and very inexpensive. So Guatemala falls into the same time zone as Texas. So for someone who's looking to be a digital nomad or to be possibly just going back and forth between the U.S. or Canada uh, and their their destination abroad, uh, Guatemala is a 
true gem. Like this is a really great location. Now Guatemala does have a reputation for safety issues and some of that is deserved, but it's important to understand that Guatemala is one of those countries where the safety of a tourist or an expat is unrelated to the safety of the, the average person in the country. So as someone who is visiting Guatemala or someone who is living there as an expat, you're not going to be involved uh, in the areas that have the crime. Like you would have to go out of your way and really seek it out. Just being there under normal conditions, Guatemala is quite safe. Maybe not as, certainly not as safe as in Nicaragua, um, maybe not as safe as some of the Southeast Asian countries, but it, it does have a significant degree of safety for the way that you will behave as an expat. So it is worth noting that some of that danger is real, but by and large, it is uh, isolated to uh, drug violence between criminal organizations. And so while those things rack up homicide and violent crime numbers, they don't generally impact the general population and certainly do not impact tourism and, and expat populations. So it's important to have that context that if this was a place that you chose to go to, you would still have quite a bit of safety in such a beautiful country that is on its own very manageable. It's not the largest of countries. Um, that's Lago de Atitlan again, uh, but it, it does have uh, so much variety. Uh, and so much easy access to other things in such a small space with some of the most amazing weather that you will find um, anywhere in uh, these, in, in the Latin American, in the African, in the Southeast Asian zone, uh, finding a place that has such completely universally fantastic weather as Guatemala is very difficult. So that's, that's a big uh, climatic vote for this particular region. And now it does have some of the areas that are uh, that were showing Lago de Atitlan, which is most of these big bodies of water, and uh, the city of Antigua. These do have a lot of expats. You will be surrounded by expats. Um, but if you go to Guatemala City, you go to Shela, the second city, uh, many of the other cities, uh, you have lots and lots of Guatemala where you're going to find practically no expats and you can get away. So you have options uh, to, to be around expats when you want to be and get away from them uh, when you don't. So very dynamic in that way. Country number nine, Ghana. Back in Africa, but this time on the West, we have Ghana. Now in recent years, Ghana has started getting a lot of attention. Ever since a few years ago, they began recalling their diaspora and, and hoping that many of those who over the centuries have been taken away from their homeland here will be able to return. So this is a really, really popular place suddenly with um, a lot of just new attention going on it. Um, Ghana is uh, located well in the midst of a very busy West Africa zone. Uh, so you do have access to other countries. You can see Benin, Togo, Nigeria, the Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Liberia, all very close. So if you want to explore a region, this is one that you can do that, but it's uh, capital of Accra is a major uh, up and coming city in the region. Very, very important. Um, you have villages and, and multi-sized cities throughout the country. Now Ghana remains relatively poor, so it does have a lot of struggles, but it does make a low cost of living. But because Accra has become such a powerhouse city, you have a lot of optional modernity that you can uh, explore in urban environments, but also you have uh, smaller villages. But if you get away from the major cities, uh, I have known expats who have lived in Ghana for some time, and it is easy to end up in situations where you may not have a lot of access to resources. So generally, if you're looking at Ghana, you're going to be looking at the southern coast. You're going to be looking at uh, the big city uh, or one of the, the nearby cities. Uh, to really have access to the resources that most expats are going to be expecting. But Ghana does have a lot to offer with great food and culture um, and, and so many uh, people who are beginning to look at it, but it's still early. So this is still off the beaten path. This is still not a mainstream expat country, but uh, there, there's this new interest in it, kind of like Uruguay, uh, probably leading Uruguay a little bit in the time frame, but uh, you can still... Um, look at Ghana as a, a really interesting option uh, that could meet um, meet a lot of needs. Uh, now, safety, definitely not going to compete with Southeast Asia, not going to compete with Latin America, but uh, from from expats that I've known, uh, from from other uh, YouTubers who go to Ghana, it's it's generally regarded, especially in the major cities, as being reasonably safe. It, it's not a major problem. Beautiful country, but 
it is not as safe as, as some of the countries we'd be looking at. And, and if you're traveling around the region, there is some uh, heightened danger um, and complications in some cases with some of the countries in the zone. So it's it, a little bit more challenging. This is not the easiest uh, country to necessarily go to as an expat from the actual logistics of being on the ground. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, a little bit more exotic, a little bit more adventurous, uh, or, or it just hits that spot for you where it has that feeling, right? We talk about get off the plane in Nicaragua and some people, it just hits them. It's the perfect place. And some people are just like, this isn't for me. And sometimes, you know, in those first few minutes, Ghana is going to give you a different blend and mix of things. So when you're uh, going into Ghana, um, this may just be a place that rings true for you. Uh, and it's so different than the other options on the list. Just like Tanzania really stands out as a completely different region, completely different culture, completely different opportunity. Uh, it's so worth looking at these, these highlights of different regions because the, the world really does have so much to offer when we look broadly. Country number 10, Tajikistan. And our final country at number 10. Tajikistan is absolutely Super interesting. I had to put this on the list because it is reasonably safe. It is so different than everything else that we've looked at. It is in the Central Asian steppe. It is a very, very lightly populated country, but they are quite welcoming to expats who want to come explore the country. Their capital city has only one and a half million inhabitants. It is a very small city itself. There is so much mountain and open steppe and just areas to explore in Tajikistan. And it's a former uh, SSR, a former member of uh, the Soviet Union during the, 19, the, the 19th century. It is uh, located pretty close to some interesting places. It's also a challenging region. Uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, um, you, you've got some places that you can travel to pretty easily and some that you will be a little bit more cautious about like Afghanistan to the south. But Tajikistan itself, a uh, good degree of safety. Um, and you can see this is wide open farmland. This is just a beautiful, beautiful country, but very rural, very, very spice road, very ancient history. Uh, so this is this is going to be for someone who really wants to venture out and do something absolutely different. There is nobody who has Tajikistan on their main visit list. Nobody is listing this as a primary destination for expats, but because it is relatively safe, because it is very low cost of living, because it is open to expats and welcoming, this really is a consideration for someone who's looking for a totally different experience than really any of the, any of the other countries that we listed. This has different weather. This has different food, different history, different culture, different language, which will be super challenging for most Westerners to deal with. Um, but this is... Uh, a really beautiful country and if you want that exotic adventurous uh, location I think this is going to be really hard to beat this is going to stand out but your money's going to go really far uh, so if you're looking to uh, you know rent an apartment or buy a house or um, you know you really can get off the grid. And I know a lot of my, my viewers who are looking at becoming expats, uh, getting completely off the grid, disconnecting and, and kind of leaving the world behind uh, is, is often a very high interest. And Tajikistan is going to do such a good job of, of making that possible for you. I mean, but look at this scenery. Like this is just so much huge, wide open spaces. It's, it, it's amazing. Uh, and, and you have desert regions, you have some pretty serious mountains, um, and uh, uh, you will be challenged in many ways as far as having international connections, um, you know, big airport uh, taking you places. Those kinds of things will be quite a bit more difficult. Um, but uh, for the right person, Tajikistan could be uh, a really great option. So that rounds out uh, our our 10 alternative countries, um, I all of these, I would be very excited to be in. All of these, I think, are just wonderful options for the right person, but all of them are safe 
Uh, some are super safe, some are just kind of safe. All of them are very low cost. All of them offer unique, amazing experiences and could be your permanent home or a great place just to stay a little while and be a digital nomad. And with that, we conclude my list of 10 alternative countries that you, I think, should look into if you're considering becoming an expat when you're doing your research and you're just looking for something that is off the beaten path, is low cost, safe, and could very well be a wonderful place for you to at least investigate and start your expat journey, whether you're looking at being a digital nomad and just want to move from place to place or you're investigating for some place that you may want to put down some roots and call home or you just want to try a place out for a while these are 10 really interesting locations that i think are well worth considering that most people are not going to have mentioned to you and you're not going to find on too many lists i do want to know what you think of the list are you interested in lists like this was this useful do you want to see more like this uh get down in those comments i want to hear from you guys of course and if as always if you do have a more lengthy the question, feel free to make a video and send that in. All the instructions are in every single set of show notes, as is my contact information if you're looking at reaching out to me. But of course, we do not have anything that we sell here on the channel. So if you would like to help support us, we do have the link above where you can buy me a coffee or a few at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. It's like Patreon. You just do a one-time support or there's a join button down there, at least on the computer versions that allows you to become a member of our channel here. And that is a small monthly fee and helps commit to uh, supporting the channel because it does take a lot to put out this show. So I really appreciate everyone who gives some financial support. And of course, go watch the next episode, share with some people you know, and welcome to so many new people who have joined the channel over the last few days. It's so great to have everyone here. I really appreciate all the newbies as well. And uh, just as a general announcement, every Thursday we try to do a uh, live stream uh, for a long period in the evening. So just something to look forward to. We don't do it a 100% of the time, but we try really hard and it's a lot of fun and it's a good chance to talk to other people in the community to ask me questions directly about uh, becoming an expat, what it takes to relocate, what life is like in Nicaragua, places I would consider, whatever. I've lived in eight countries. I've visited uh, more than 40 and I have been uh, looking and, and researching and, and being an expat for a very long time. So this is something I'm very passionate about. And it's just a lot of fun to be on the live stream. It's a neat way to connect with the community. So we totally appreciate everyone who takes the time to hang out on there, crack a beer open, have a meal, pop it on the TV and participate. It's a lot of fun. All right. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.